I am Cengiz now 36, 37 years old. But I was in the university, I started looking for the way self-sufficient life like and then I ended up naturally like it is the only way you should build a, like a farm because I understand the philosophy of where my home is where my food is grow. So after that I, I'm an electronic engineer, I finished it and worked around like uh, 12 years all around the world, big projects. But always there's only one thing, my goal was to establish a farm, self-sufficient living. So after three years looking for a land, suitable land, I found my land here in Bodrum. At the same time there was a, like a project going on in Kazakhstan and I had a, like a British architect I bought this land, I showed him the pictures and then I told him like I'm going to make a, like a prefabric house here. It's easiest one. He just started shouting me you should make a like a natural house which is goes harmony with the nature. It's the only way living in the nature and sustainable. He showed me some pictures and then as soon as I see the pictures I decided yes, okay, I'm going to go with that. But without you I cannot build a house. We both quit after that. He started living with me here and then we start uh, deciding the, where we're going to do the house, how we're going to design the land, how we're going to design the water. After for a while, we decided to build exactly here a big super adobe house. It's around 85 meters square. We used earth bags, which is the, like a soil inside with clay soil. It's like a Earth bag is like, like a one kilometer roll, so you can make a rings turn and then turn with, with barbed wire middle them between them, and then you create a like an arc like a, you see behind me. So around 29 days with villagers here by hand, we built this house, and I was still working to get money. Actually, I am still working as an engineer. Uh, I understood that living in a self-sufficient, establish a farm needs a lot of money. Like it doesn't happen if you have a, like a land coming from your grandfather. So I didn't have any. And after pandemic, with the pandemic start actually, all my family, my dad, sister, mom, comes here to live with me. And the house even wasn't ready to live with four people. Like so, actually we work more with my family to at least make the house more suitable for living so all the like uh, the water system the tanks uh, the water tanks bought that time and then after we finalize the house i started around like a two and a half three years ago start like a focus on the gardening so now it is it is, but every every day it is growing. Oh, thankfully, I am getting help from work aware's volunteers. So uh, slowly I am going, and it is also the principle of the permaculture. You have to really observe the nature and then go with the nature with harmony instead of like I have a conflict with the nature. So that's why everything is going slowly but steadily, and then permanently, I can say. Okay, here you see our earth bags as a garden wall. So it is holding the, uh, the all the soil here. We build exactly the same method, exactly the same technique. Everything is the same as we built the house. 
all the super adobe. So we in it we have like a soil, small stones like a small gravels, and then we have like a clay and a little bit of cement here. And then we put them one by one and then as you can see it is always curved because curved wall gives a really big strength as the, like a circular wall, circular dome make our house strength really strong. So that's why we never make a, like a straight walls with the earth back. We always use the curves and then like a turns as you can see with the natural ones, not too strong. So we give them the really powerful uh, strength to hold anything behind them. As you see that the house is like a uh, circular, so everything inside we try to be having the with corners. As the Gaudi said, is the, we are the belong of the nature, we are belong to the nature, so also the where we live actually have to be sweet to the nature, and in nature you cannot see the corners nowhere. So that's why we try to do inside having no corners, of course some furnitures here have some corners, we couldn't accept, <laughs> run from it. So here I am now uh, standing in the middle of the living room. This is the tree, the atlas, uh, because it is actually carrying all the terrace we have uh, on top. And then with cedar trees, as you can see, like a 12, all circular. And then left side, we have a, like a small dome it was first designed as a like a chill dome we call it we called it with the seats then it turns out to be a like a music musical dome with all my instruments inside and then the right side as you see from the outside we have a like a two floor bedroom and then under the bedroom actually we have in the soil covered by soil uh, we have a root basement like a root cellar. So it is actually the right side dome is like a three floor, around 12 meter, uh, just carrying itself easily. Okay, I think because in my professional engineering life, I am really like, uh, really go with always like automation all around the world. I decided to do automation in my house. It's like a smart farmhouse kind of way. Uh, why I'm doing this, then you can use the electric much efficiently because you can control them, program your stuff. So you don't forget the electricity on usually at night. Even my internet connection because I'm sleeping after 12 a.m. at most. So at 1 a.m. it turns off automatically and then like 7 a.m. it turns on automatically. So even my watering pumps is connected to automation system I can just easily like I turn them on turn them off at night to not get too much power from batteries so that's why it's also installation was much easier than the normal installation you don't need to run the old electrical cable all around like at the switch and then then go to the ceiling they just separate the goes to the center and then they have only the data cable so the electricity is not everywhere not making a cage so that's why I decided to go with the basic automation system for the house and for the equipment I'm using around the house. So here is our Zone 1 permaculture garden, which is the closest one to the house and then which is also our first garden uh, next to the house. So we are using raised beds to use the, also we are filling the raised beds according to the Hugel culture method, which is the like, uh, you know, the, the lowest part is taking the like a big uh, branches and then logs. Then it's getting smaller branches and logs. Then all the compost stuff, everything is from garden. When you like a trim the stuff, everything actually, we, we are using the, the white plants after we trim them, we just put it inside. So actually we are creating our own soil inside the raised beds. 
right now you're seeing them a little bit empty because it's the like uh, spring season right now and then it is changed from winter stuff to the uh, summer stuff that's why we are harvesting whatever it is ready from winter you can see it's still some onions and red beets here and then like a cabbages we just take it out uh, switch charts so now we slowly start planting the summer stuff like a uh, companion plants flowers like a uh, uh, marigold zinnia kind of they look like really good and then also they really prevent the farm or the garden from bad bugs for for example tomato so now we just finished the dripping system again we just set it up again check it because every year it could be a something a big hole so every spring we are checking the dripping system for the beds or for all garden and then we are adding more compost on the top of it to feed the soil better and then we planting the uh, summer stuff as you can see here some do it yourself tra uh, trellis we're gonna use it here as a like a, for our beans so the the beans can hold this trellis the other trellis you can see my back is for zucchinis so the all the zucchini and then cucumber will like uh, climb the trellis so uh, then it is really nice and then they're not taking too much space on the floor on the ground so it is also easy to pick them when they're ready with the trellis Okay, this small greenhouse, which is also connected to our house, actually in the beginning designed and built for the seedlings, like a germination process. Uh, but then I couldn't refrain myself to planting here. <laughs> so it turns out like a small greenhouse, which also has many, whatever, like I'm growing here, everything. As you can see, like uh, in, we are putting our winter and summer stuff here. Like uh, there come, for example, next to me is like a tomatoes comes from the like a seeds from last year. Even I didn't plant them; I just throw them in the soil last year when I collecting the harvesting the uh, tomatoes. So this year, when the weather is like uh, getting hot, they grow naturally by itself. So this greenhouse is more than seedling. We are using the growing more here, whatever we can find a place actually. But then we realized that it is not enough for us. So we just build an, another big uh, greenhouse uh, at town. I'll show you later. For example, you can see here the both winter stuff and summer stuff in spring growing together. We have celeries. We have like a here sage tea, sage tree, and then we have like a summer for summer. We have tomatoes coming up. We have onions from winter is behind me. We have also like a yearly trees here, like a permanent trees, like a, even bushes, like it's lemongrass. And then soon everywhere will be covered with basils soon. And then it's like that, like a, in greenhouse, you can really go with the winter and summer stuff all together without doing too much seedlings uh, they're just coming up naturally okay the farm is located in Boldum Turkey uh, it's like a week I can say that the Aegean site and then actually it is a little bit dry in summer we have almost no rain three months four months more than actually five months and then in winter, uh, it's rainy, but last four years, all I can observe that the rain is getting in slowly. For example, this winter, we had really dry winter. Hopefully spring, now we have a little bit rain, but mostly I can say it's like a little bit dry. So luckily we have water and then we are using the rain harvesting to keep the water uh, in the land instead of like uh, flushing and then going away uh, when we bought the land we have like around 40 olive trees already in it so they were really like uh, old ones and then healthy ones so it's like uh, in the beginning it was an olive farm 
before we turn into a, like a permaculture farm. We, I actually start planting last three years, like uh, all other kind of fruit trees and then also nitrogen fixed trees for the feeding the soil naturally. Like uh, it's the permaculture idea. You don't do much. You let the nature do its stuff to feed the soil instead of giving the chemicals. So to do so, we planted around like a four, around like a 60 different fruit trees, like a, a citrus fruit trees, like a lemon and stuff, oranges. And then we have like a pomegranate. We have apples, we have everything. They're just only like three years old right now. Uh, as you can see, they're still slow, but uh, growing healthily. And then as a nitrogen fixed trees, for example, to feed the soil, we have like uh, acacias all around. It's like uh, one acacia in the middle and then all the fruit trees, we made a ring around it. So the one acacia can feed the, uh, all the fruit trees around it. So that's why we have like a, that system is everywhere. Uh, we first planting the acacia tree, like a nitrogen fixed trees, and then we are planting around it, the fruit trees or whatever trees we need. Yeah, because it's also olive farm every November, we are collecting the olives. We are making early harvest to get the, like a best quality acid for the uh, the olives. So uh, we are using our olives, most of it for the olive oil, but also we are sparing some of them to just for eating. So we are curing the olives for eating like a one month, but the most of it is turned into a olive oil can go like a one two years we it's like really high quality olive oil we are getting from here the like spring farm is like a totally off grid so to do so first thing actually we handle the water but the secondly is the most important is the electric so we don't have an electric from the the municipality so we have producing our own electric with the solar panels. So I have like a 18 and another eight solar panels, like a 330 watt, uh, which is totally enough because we are producing the two phase energy, also three phase power for the, uh, our, uh, the well pump, which is in under 160 meter down in the ground. So to make it, we didn't want to how you say the the cover the land with the solar panels that's why we thought the best thing is to make the like on the pool we just made a frame as you can see and then uh, we install our panels on the top of it so we it both works as like a shadowing the uh, the pond also uh, it has no taking any place on the land so we can use the land for planting uh, we have spare system actually two different system because we're totally off grid uh, if any inverter goes down so no electric couple days to fix it so to prevent this we have two separate system feeding the house if one of them is failed we can just switch the second one till the fix the first one the failed one Okay, as I told you, like uh, we have two separate solar systems. One is like a three kilowatt, other one is eight kilowatt. So totally we are around like a 10 kilowatt inst instantaneous power when there's sun up. Even if it's a cloudy days, we are having a, like a three, four kilowatt because too many panels we have. And why we have a two separate system, it is still feeding the house two separate, like a lightings, and then like a TV, all other like a high point, like a dishwasher, washing machine, even oven is connected to the other one. So if one of them is fail, easily we can switch the cables. So we can uh, save our day one or two days till we get a, like a new fixed to fix our uh, inverter. We can like uh, have two, three days can go with the spare one. So because we are totally off grid here, even two, three days, no power is really 
uh, bad for us because like a fridge is always needs to be worked so everything is in the fridge would be wasted so that's why uh, when we plan the uh, solar panel system we go with the two separate system and then we have eight batteries even four and four is separately connected uh, uh, inverters When I bought the land, the first thing, the crucial thing was to get the water actually. So in Turkey, actually we have a guy here who checked the water with the, the, like, uh, the tree sticks. So he found where is the good water. So he pointed out here. So we drilled up here like around 160 meter. So, but uh, we luckily we found a, like a source, uh, like a spring source in 130 meters down. So the, our water is always coming up on top without using any pump. Actually, that's why we call it after that. The farm name is like uh, come from that Lucky Spring Farm is actually comes from uh, because we have a Lucky Spring here. What we are doing here because the water is coming up naturally so we don't need to use any electric and pumping stuff so we are sending the water to the pond and then from pond we have like a hose for the dripping system so the, all the water goes from pond to the garden with the pipes so and then also from garden we have a dripping system so it is going to the dripping system so we have this kind of no power water distribution for the land. Uh, we are on the top of the land right now and then my land is going uh, with slopely on down with the steps. So it is perfect for permaculture idea so you can really uh, make your water management much easier and then without depend on any, any power devices. So to prevent to use the water in the house with electricity pumps we raised up our tanks here and then we are filling with our so that's the only time we are using our pump uh, for the well pump to pump the water up in here uh, why then in this case in the, the night time i don't have to use uh, the hydro for uh, for the house it's still like a, with the gravity so of power we can get the water inside the house, it's still enough for showering and stuff. But in daytime when we have sun, uh, we can use our pumps if we need a more pressure. For example, if you're having a shower or if you're just uh, watering the garden, we can have more uh, pressure with the electricity. But at night, we don't want to touch the batteries. We are not want to uh, drain the batteries too much. So that's why we create this system. In the, with this case, like the battery's life can be really long, go long, like extend your life batteries because the batteries are most expensive stuff for the off-grid uh, solar panels system. We are trying to use our batteries more than four or five years, where the other people usually go batteries like one year, two years. But with this one, uh, it's perfect. We only use the batteries at night for lighting, TV, and then like charging our stuff. So they really can go more than seven years. About heating and cooling for the farm, inside the house of course, because we have a, like a super out of earth back house, the walls is around like a 40, 45 centimeter thick with the earth inside. So uh, the cooling, we don't do much in summer. Even if it is too hot, we only use some fans, simple fans, not using too much power. But for cooling in winter, when it is too cold, we are actually using the stove for each uh, the bedroom area and the living room area, two separate stove if it is get too cold. And then we are using the actually, uh, literally the woods from forest. I have here some also olive trees and then uh, pine 
trees because we unfortunately lost uh, the had a big fire two years ago in the forest so we lost all of the pine forest but we are using the rest of it whatever still there exists as a burning wood so to do so every year in summer we slowly collecting the the woods for burning for all winter okay now we are in our biggest greenhouse it is on the second one actually it is like a 15 times 5 meter 5.5 meter here is instead of making a, like a raised beds to use the height because it's a limited height we make first trenches and then we start filling them slowly with the, the again Hugo culture method with our like everything from garden, kitchen waste, and then uh, the composters we have. So we are doing here in this land all compost methods actually. Like we are having it here hot compost, cold compost, also bokashi. So uh, because it is not crowded farm, I'm usually like living in here alone. It takes a little bit more time to have too many compost but still it is the best way to enrich the soil uh, healthy. Uh, what we are doing here, as I told you, in ground, we have like a big branches, then whatever we found from, uh, from the garden, like a wild plants, and then we have inside it, actually you can see, I can show you here, we have inside it also like all the kitchen waste, like a bokashi compost and our cold compost here. So if we have the like a trenches like that or raised beds, instead of the making the compost in separate area, we are doing our compost where it needs to be done. So it saves you the working in two separate area, changing the compost all the time, carrying the compost. No, instead of we are just directly uh, putting everything for the compost here and then wait for a while, like around half a year, then it become a really richful, uh, healthy soil. As you can see, like uh, the many plants here, we didn't even made from seedlings, they just come up naturally, like uh, tomatoes and spinaches. So, what we're gonna grow here, in the middle actually we taught for the like uh, equatorial trees, like papaya, banana, that kind of stuff, you can see our first papaya we do it with the work awares and then we're gonna plant more here the like a trees and then other trenches like a like a bats veggie bats we're gonna use them to grow veggies like a tomato cucumber whatever like a, all the veggies the greenhouse is like a kind of professional greenhouse uh, there's like a windows easily can be open and then be closed for according to the weather in summer it is too hot of course we are opening all the windows make all the air inside and then also we are putting a like a shelter kind of shadow shelter like a 70 percent stop the sh uh, sun so when it is too hot in summer here it really helps to plants grow more healthily Yeah, in this greenhouse, we are also using here as a like a seedling area. Before even spring comes, we start preparing our seedlings in seedling trays, as you can see. So in, in greenhouse, uh, without worrying weather issue, you can grow your seedlings even before the spring. So when they are ready, we will put them in the garden slowly, like a one by one. Okay, this area we plant for the chickens. That's why we covered with fence around like 300 meters square. And then actually I plant the chicken stays in here most of the time because all I can observe that chicken can eat everything, all your garden. So I don't want to let them like uh, freely goes everywhere in the land except the uh, 
between winter harvest to springtime because then there is no as like today there is not too much on the uh, garden to eat so I only plan them to go out in the beginning of spring or in the middle of spring so they can also clean the land like uh, they are really useful for fertilizing the land also eating the bugs and scorpions everything so we plan out for the chickens cover like all with fence now we are going to build the soon chicken coop in here raised up so it's going to be hexagonal chicken coop and why I'm raising up the chicken coop I'm gonna leave it some place with the, like a hole on the ground so all the chicken sheets can go down I can collect them easily and then throw the garden rest of the garden the final I can recommend people who has the same dream with me, living in an off-grid, fully self-sufficient. Of course, it's not a, like an easy way. You have to really put your effort in, in it. But at the end, slowly, when you realize you're just going a huge way in, a, in a, like in two, three years, then you understand how much value you put in it. Even, even though it's much, much too much effort, and in the beginning it's much, uh, you need to spend money anyway, even to find the land, buy a land, make the house, even the cheapest natural one. But what I am, how I am like uh, consult myself is like uh, give motivation. When you grow, even a small seed like a dust size, and then you put in the ground, you a little bit care, take care of it, and then in two months it become a, like a two three meters tree or like a plant feeding you then uh, it gives you the, all the motivation you have to wait for it you have to be patient for it